uh, in earlier lectures we have dealt with uh, a elastic region uh, in our engineering stress strain curve okay so we have seen that in elastic region the stress is proportional to strain through young's modulus okay so in this class we will see what is an atomistic basis of elasticity okay so we will look into what is the origin of young's modulus okay where is it come from okay so as we know there are forces between atoms okay and there that we call it as interatomic inter forces so what is the role of interatomic forces to determine the young's modulus or this elasticity constant what is an effect of packing arrangement of atoms in a crystal okay what are the different bonds which affects this elastic constant of a material so we know that interatomic potential uh, can be written in this form okay what is an interatomic potential we we have if let's say if we have two atoms okay the potential between them the energy of attraction or repulsion is called as interatomic potential and this is written in this fashion okay so this is an attractive part of interatomic potential and this is a repulsive part okay so when i see this relation okay so the m is always smaller than n okay that means uh, if you want to bring two atoms close to each other and and make them uh, at a equilibrium distance this m must be smaller smaller than n okay so in most of the time we use this leonard jones potential and sometimes it is called as uh, 12/6 potential okay uh, where the value of n is 12 and n is 6 okay so when you plot this uh, potential or interatomic potential or i can call it as interatomic energy also with respect to distance between these two atoms uh, you can see this part is of attractive energy okay that's why it's in the negative sign okay so it's an attractive energy between these two atoms and this part is a repulsive energy okay so the net energy or the net potential uh will be the summation of this repulsive energy er and the attractive energy ea okay and this is where you can see that this is the net energy the net energy decreases as a as r is decreasing uh, when i try to bring two atoms together and it reaches an equilibrium position somewhere here okay uh somewhere here and this is i called as equilibrium position r not and now if i try to push them closer the net energy then increases okay in this fashion so this is an equilibrium position which these two atoms can reach okay now if i want to find out the forces which is acting between these two atoms what i have to do is i have to differentiate this uh interatomic potential with respect to r okay which gives me a force or the forces acting between these two atoms okay so here you can see that we have interatomic energy versus distance uh, which is plotted over here and this nature of this curve is because uh, when these atoms were far apart there is no energy or though there is no interaction between them but when i try to bring it close there will be an attractive force which is acting between the core of atoms which is nothing but the nucleus and the electrons of other atoms okay and they will try to uh, attract each other and when they reach to a certain distance 
at equilibrium distance and now if I try to further push them together there will be a repulsive force between uh, electrons and electrons of these two atoms and the nucleus and nucleus of these two atoms okay so again then the interatomic energy increases now if I take a derivative of this uh, interatomic energy with respect to R I can see that uh, at equilibrium position there will be no net force so you have f equal to zero okay and this uh, distance is called as interatomic spacing now uh, another view of looking the bonds between metals or alloys uh, is to in a view of ball and spring model okay so i have uh, atoms which are here and i can say that the bonds between them are can be represented by a spring okay so the all the bonds which are present over here uh, can be represented by spring so i can have a spring over here i can sp have a spring over here i can have a spring over here even i can have a spring from this okay so this uh, uh, bonding between atoms can be represented by springs so I am sh have shown here uh, two atoms connected by a spring and let's say uh, uh, the R0 that is uh, equilibrium distance between them is R0. Now I, put a, I stretch this bond, I put a force on them and try to pull them. Okay, So that gets stretched. Okay, Let's say uh, now the distance between them has increased to R. Okay. So uh, when you try to understand, uh, when you try to understand a spring, uh, when you stretch it, it it stretches up, okay, and when I release it, they go to their original position, and that is what we have seen when we uh, uh, see a elastic behavior of material. So uh, I can correlate the spring uh, relation like the force uh, is equal to k x, where k is spring constant. Similarly, for atoms in this situation, I can say that the force is equal to S into R minus R naught. Okay, this is a X, the change in the position. Okay, so S is nothing but a bond stiffness. So I can, uh, with this spring uh, ball or ball spring model analogy, I can say that the atoms, uh, the forces between these two atoms can be related to a bond stiffness or a bond. Uh, with respect and uh, the change in their positions okay now this s is a uh, changes with for a different uh, bonding type okay so you have uh, primary bonds like covalent ionic and metallic so this these are very strong bonds so the bond stiffness s will be more or higher for such kind of bonds Whereas uh, for secondary uh, bonding such as hydrogen or one type of bonds, these are very weak bonds. So their bond stiffness will be smaller. Okay. So another point is like uh, atomic packing. Okay. So like I have already mentioned that uh, the, at the atomic packing, the more the atomic packing, uh, more the number of springs. Okay. So, uh, so bond stiffness represents the materials uh, bonding nature and even the atomic arrangements now uh, this s can be written as uh, like we have this we have f is equal to s into r minus r naught so i can write s as df upon dr which is nothing but the second derivative of interatomic potential uh, with respect to the distance okay and which I have marked over here so this s is a change in force with change in radius uh, at very near I can say that at r equal to r naught okay or i can say that r tending to r naught so it's very small change in r at this position or i can say at interatomic spacing 
this stiffness is defined. So S naught, I can write it as this. Uh, when I put this limiting condition, I can write this as 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 not as second derivative of potential energy with respect to R. Okay. So so I can consider that this as not. Okay. This as not here remains uh, constant. Okay. It doesn't vary uh, when uh, the displacements are very small. Okay. And we are we are very interested uh, and this reason uh, becomes valid because uh, in elastic regime uh, we displaces or stretch the bonds to a little amount only we don't break the bonds okay so i can write that force is equal to s naught into r minus r naught okay so with this relation we move on and now we try to find out uh, what is the re relation between this S naught and stress, which are the force you are applying. Okay, so I have shown a schematic over here where these two are uh, atoms which are apart by R naught, and these are the atoms which are uh, apart from R naught. And when I apply a stress. Uh, in this direction, this bonds get stretched. Okay, this bond gets stretched in overall this cross section area. Okay, so from this uh, relation here, okay, uh, the bonds are getting stretched by an amount of R, uh, and initial equilibrium positions was R naught. So I can find out a strain. To so say strain, I can define it as R minus R naught upon R naught. Okay. And uh, we have written that F is equal to S naught uh, into R minus R naught. Okay. Now, if you look at, uh, we want to find out the stress per bond per atom. Okay. So I call it as sigma. Okay. So this is a sigma which I would like to evaluate. So let's understand this schematic. So I have a bonds over here, many bonds, but I consider uh, this uh, small portion uh, here okay so uh, when I consider this region so number of atoms over here is can be equal to 1 so because I want to find out a stress per bond so I consider this region where I get n equal to 1 okay and area will be equal to r naught square okay so what will be the stress uh, per bond per atom, I can write it as force, which I have defined earlier, upon number is 1 here, and I can write it as R naught square. Okay, so this is nothing but uh, F upon R naught square. So sigma I get F upon R naught square, and I plug in this, uh, I plug in this relation over here. Okay. So I can say that sigma r naught square is equal to s naught r minus r naught square. And now uh, we from I replace this strain uh, in this relation, okay, here, and we can say that sigma upon e is equal to s naught upon r naught. Okay. So this is a relation between. Uh, so we have seen that this is a relation uh, uh, between stress and strain uh, to uh, bond stiffness and interatomic uh, distance. Okay, so I can write it as sigma is equal to S naught upon R naught into epsilon. So Young's modulus I can approximate. To be equal to S naught upon R naught. Okay, so how to evaluate this R naught? So R naught can be evaluated from XRD experiments. Okay, from XRD experiments and S naught you can evaluate from we have defined it as D2U upon dr square at R equal to R naught. So we 
if you know the potential okay if you know the u uh, we can find out what is s not and from there you can evaluate what is young's modulus so of a material so we have derived a relation uh, between stress and strain uh, from its atomistic understanding how the bonds are stretching up and uh, how when they when you release the stress and they come back to their original position based on bond stiffness okay now uh, here i have a table for different materials okay with corresponding to their elastic modulus okay so you can see that uh, metals okay they have a certain uh, elastic modulus but now you can see that the ceramics okay shows somewhat higher uh, elastic modulus okay and uh, you have polymers over here which shows very small uh, elastic uh, modulus as compared to ceramics and metals so you can clearly see that uh, metals having metallic bonds okay while ceramics uh, having covalent and ionic bonds while this has secondary bonds okay so so these bonds are weaker uh, as compared to covalent uh, secondary bonds are weaker as compared to ionic uh, covalent or metallic bonds so they uh, show a less or uh, lower values of elastic modulus as compared to uh, metals and ceramics okay in this also uh, you can see that uh, where you can see that aluminum uh, copper and nickel has same structure okay same crystal structure okay that is fcc okay and you can see that the aluminum has a lowest uh, elastic modulus uh, as compared to copper and nickel okay so you, you have to figure out why is it why is it so okay so another interesting thing here you can see that diamond which is constitutes of carbon and graphite which is also forming by carbon but in diamond you have diamond uh, crystal structure okay dc crystal pattern and where you have graphite which is nothing but a layered structure okay so you have uh, in layer you have sp2 hybridized carbon but here you have uh, secondary bonds okay in between layers so basically uh, in graphite the bonding is not strong so you can see the elastic modulus of graphite it's smaller uh, as compared to uh, diamond okay which is much higher another interesting thing uh, uh, you can see that the thermal expansion coefficient okay so we have seen that interatomic potential somewhere here uh, was like this uh, very okay so uh, this was r not so you can see that the thermal expansion coefficient uh, depends on this value uh, this energy if so this is let's say material 1 and let's say i have another material something like this which has a more valley so its thermal expansion will be smaller okay so thermal expansion which is alpha uh, of 2 will be smaller than alpha of 1 okay so you can see that that has been reflected from your uh, from the elastic uh, mo uh, modulus of elasticity so for let's say for aluminium I have a modulus of elasticity as 67 and let's say steel which has modulus of elasticity uh, 210 so you can see that the thermal expansion coefficient for steel is smaller as compared to uh, for that of aluminium okay so I would like you to check uh, 
thermal expansion of different metals or elements in from the modern periodic table and compare it with a modulus of elasticity and you can compare the modulus of elasticity versus melting point so take a periodic table uh, find out uh, find out uh, what is uh, and then have find out take take elements take their uh, melting points on x axis okay and plot elastic modulus on y axis okay see what is the relation so similarly you have to you can do two one more thing you take elastic modulus on y axis and take density okay and see how these relations are happening so with this uh, i would end this lecture